Schultz. Here, Trustee Robert Schmalstreet. Here, Trustee Fernando Torres is present as well. We have a quorum. On March 16, 2020, Government Abbott temporarily suspended certain open meetings requirements imposed by the Open Meetings Act to slow the spread of the COVID-19. This action permits the meeting subject to the Open Meetings Act to be hosted by telephone or video conference. In accordance with those suspending rules, we certify that the following notice of this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. One, although members of the board are not gathered in a central physical location, we do have a quorum in attendance at this meeting by video conference or telephone call. We are meeting by use of Zoom software application, which allows two-way communication for members of the public. As we would at any in-person meeting, members of the public who have followed the instructions on the meeting notice for registered Registering to speak from the public comment portion will be uh, unmuted for three minutes to speak. All other meeting procedures will adhere to the board adopted procedures to the extent practical. An audio recording of this meeting has been made and will be available to the public for at a later date. We apologize in advance for any foreseeable difficulties and ask for your patience as we navigate unprecedented conditions. If you have any questions about the suspended laws, please call the office of the attorney general at 888- 672-6782 or by email at toma at oag.texas.gov. We're going to go now to the uh, invocation. Um, Mr. Castillo, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. I pledge allegiance to yeah. my the United States of America. Will you lead us in a prayer? Yes, of course. Heavenly Father, loving Father, we come together this evening and we just give you all the praise and glory, Heavenly Father, for allowing us this opportunity to come together as a family, united by the love that we feel for our students. Heavenly Father, tonight we just thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for you just always, always being here with us. And Heavenly Father, tonight we just ask that you guide Dr. Rivera and our Board of Trustees as they make those very critical and important decisions for our district. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless them all and bless your family. We also ask for blessings for our community, Heavenly Father, for all of us present here tonight and all those watching this uh, video. Heavenly Father, we just ask you that you continue to keep our community safe, especially our boys and girls. And Heavenly Father, we just once again give you all the praise and glory for all the wonderful things and the miracles that you place on our district. Heavenly Father, we ask all of this in Jesus' name and we say, Amen. 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 All right. Number three. Comments from the public? None. None. Okay, we're going to go ahead and jump into number four then. Superintendent's report. A coronavirus COVID-19. Doctor? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I have 17 slides tonight. And the first one is, is good news. It's on the stimulus funding. Uh, President Trump signed a $2 trillion st stimulus relief package, which includes $13.4 billion to assist schools. And... Uh, it, last, last year, in federal, pro, in federal programs, the district received almost, almost $4 million in federal, federal funds, Title I funds. Under this formula, we are set to get about $3.1 million for the district in stimulus funding. So the one of the three, $3.1 million, uh, we can use the money in, in, some, of these, in some, of these, some of these ways. Uh, supplies for clean and sanitizing our schools, school effort to help students from low-income families, students with disability, to coordinate long-term school closures, including meals, technology, and serving students with disabilities, to purchase technology so we can help our students to connect to learning. This also includes adaptive equipment for students with disability, and also classroom supplies, mental health services, planning and providing in-person or online summer learning programs and after-school programs, continue to provide district-level services, including employment of staff, 
and then to assist with other costs not associated with the coronavirus. We don't have the money yet, but we expect to have the money soon. Again, uh, about $3.1 million. On page two, there's also, there's also a FEMA reimbursement. We submitted an application, which is due April 24th. The federal cost is about 75%. The district share about 25%. Not all expenses will be covered by FEMA, but other funding streams may be created. And then uh, the, the expenses that we can use the money for will be staff overtime, which we're doing right now, the distance learning expenses, including electrical devices, uh, the cleaning, and, and when we sanitize our schools, additional online learning, communication and public information cost, curriculum development, supplies for paper distance learning package and delivery cost, expenses to continue the food assistance program services. So we are going to get some FEMA reimbursements. Don't know how much yet, but we made the application. On page three, we received a summer grant of $50,000. And through this, through this grant, students will be allowed to gain experience and work within the district in the career pathways of business and technology. The program was scheduled to begin May the 1st and end in August 31st, but the timeline might change due to the, to the coronavirus. So again, the grant is to help our students right now in school. They will work in the offices in the areas of business and technology. On page four, I'm happy to report that from the budget, right now there's a surplus the goal is to have a balanced budget. And right now we have about $4 million as far as revenues and as far as expenses. So right now we've got about $4 million. We still have more expenses coming in, but uh, again, the goal, the goal is a balanced budget. And right now we're not in the deficit. We're almost at $4 million. So if the school year ended today and we pay off our bills and expenses, we would have $4 million in our fund balance. On page five, this is uh, what we are doing right now in preparing a planning for planning between now and, and the end of the school year and beginning the new year. Staff and I are preparing in case schools remain closed for the remainder of the school year. Staff and I are developing a plan for promotion, retention, and grading if schools remain closed, closed. Staff and I are devising plans to conduct student registration for the next for the next school year, either online or on site. We're also beginning the process to construct the 2020-21 district budget. We are studying student enrollment on how it might affect the budget. Also, we're studying the effect of possible property values that might be, might be lowered because uh, of, of the virus. We're looking at perhaps some businesses closing. We're looking at tax collections. So we're planning a very conservative budget. The state revenues are also declining. So the state might have to dip into the rainy day fund, which they never have. So right now, the plan that we have is to work on a budget, looking at enrollment, at property values, at business, at tax collections, and working on a very conservative budget to ensure in case these things happen, we have the money to go ahead and come up with a balanced budget. We're also studying a summer school program, completely different from past years because our schools have been closed. We are studying plans for a possible summer graduation for the class of 2020 if May graduations do not occur. And uh, also we're exploring the possibility of having a third option of conducting a virtual graduation ceremony. Uh, because the senior picture was not taken with caps and gowns, we wanted to do a first large frame with individual senior pictures will be displayed at the high school. Uh, parents have been informed about checking out Chromebooks for their, for their sons and daughters. Additional Chromebooks have been ordered. Parents were informed that their sons and daughters can use the EISD school building, the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, which is accessible at the parking lots, 
parking lots in front of every school. All professional employees are working daily, eight to four, either from their office or from home. Auxiliary and our employees are also on call eight to four daily and will be given tasks to, to complete. In, in conferencing with our legal counsel, they informed us that premium pay did not apply to auxiliary or hourly personnel working from home. Premium pay only implied if they're called to physically work at the district site. Therefore, we'll be studying options of getting work responsibilities with transportation, maintenance, custodial cafeteria for eight hours, things such as uh, certification, UN safety films, calling students, and possibilities for the staff, because right now the staff are being paid. They're being paid, they're not working. So and, uh, what we want to do is have something for them to do to four daily during the five days, days of the week. We're also working with the UTRGV with the possibility of purchasing Chromebooks for our students that participate in their programs. So this is a district planning on things that we want to do in case we don't come back in May, plan for the summer and plan for the new school year. On page six, I wanted to go ahead and just tell the board, the community, what we're doing. The principals have told me they all have assignments and uh, they're telling me what they're doing to ensure that the instruction continues. Last week, the high school passed out 400 packets. They're doing, they're utilizing distance learning using Google Classrooms, Zoom conferencing, on ramps, Canvas, Blackboard, Remind app, Google Voice. They're also working in the assignments in ELA, math and Spanish. And uh, they're using they're using the the Edge Unity on science, social studies, creative recovery, math, science and ELA. All courses have been updated with, with contact information, email and Google phone numbers. Lesson plans are assigned and posted on the web. Teachers are uploading all lessons, contact logs, uh, professional development certificates, a Google Drive designed to each subject. Weekly Zoom meetings are held by the high school by department with the principal and assistant principals. Teachers are contacting students daily to provide assistance as needed. Counselors are providing or contacting their students to disseminate required information, especially for the especially for the seniors and graduates. And again, uh, the instructional packages, we had about 400 that were delivered uh, last week, and they're calling to see those that did not pick them up. And again, phone books and hotspots are being issued to students uh, twice a week. On page uh, seven, this is, this is the academy, the option school. Teachers are developing instructional lessons to ensure that students are meeting the necessary course requirements to complete the graduation requirements. Students continue to work on their assigned lessons utilized in the online Plato instructional program from their homes. Chromebooks have been issued out to students requesting one. Teachers are reviewing the lessons completed and providing the necessary assistance needed. Teachers are communicating by phone with each student on a regular basis, making sure that all students are on task and advancing on their individual instructional plan. The principal, Mr. Gutierrez, is in constant communication with the staff keeping abreast of the students' needs and making sure that the kids that are there are able to graduate uh, in, in May or, the, or in the summer. On page eight, I have the Kate. And, a, and again, with Kate, they're using instructional package and they're utilizing online programs like Google, Google Applied Digital Skills website, the ICEV online curriculum, eDynamite Learning, the, the MindTap online, and the Zoom conference with students. The most important thing here is that the kids that are working on these programs are able are able to get their, their certification on the different programs. For example, the patient care technical program, students will continue program remotely through a learned management system. We'll have to wait to test our students. The cosmetology, barber, and nail tech will continue their clock hours by a distance learning utilizing me lady online curriculum the texas department of regulation granted versus approval again need to wait for the test uh, to until granted approval 
the Texas A&M Colonia program, community health worker certification students will continue to work through Google, Classrooms, and Seesaw app. The welding program, students have already demonstrated skill and knowledge, pending welder qualification sheet from the test labs. The AutoCAD, students are working on exam, preparation materials, we need to schedule a testing date uh, for, for, for the cert port, and the high school is a cert port group. And teachers are calling students on a daily basis to ensure that uh, they are getting what, what they need. On Carlos Truan, teachers have developed instructional packets for reading, math, science, social studies, and Spanish. On Thursday of last week, 470 packets were delivered. All teachers are using the Remind app, which allows all teachers to communicate with teachers and students and vice versa. All Remind emails are available on the website as well as parents and students to access. Teachers have been contacting students, the Remind apps, emails and phones. All previous and current instructional packets are available online. Hard copies of the instructional packets have been handed out. Some teachers are using Google Classroom to deliver instructional materials in lesson. The IKL program is available for all students as a supplement to their packets for math, science, social studies, and English language arts and reading. The STEM Scopes program is being used specifically for science for all students to access. Zoom meetings are being held with the administrative team and all subject areas on a weekly basis. Parents requesting Chromebooks have been issued one. So far, 21 Chromebooks have been requested. At, on page 10, David Ibarra, Teachers are creating online lessons through distance learning with the following apps, Google Classroom, YouTube, Remind, Epic, Accelerated Reader, iOS and Notes app, Google Voice, IXL program. Instructional packets have been provided. Last week, 253 packets were delivered. And teachers are calling students on a weekly basis to check on assignments and to see who has not completed work. Parents have checked out Chromebooks and Zoom meetings are being held with, with the teachers. Now on the elementary, at Garcia Elementary, the focus is on the instructional package, one math and one reading activity per day. Teachers are calling parents to download Class Dojo on their phones. Teachers are calling students to see if they, if they need help. Technology is being used to help students by utilizing the following online programs, Class Dojo, they are testing, I, I ready 3-5 math and reading, IKL K-5 math and reading science, and social studies until June, and then the, the math, and then the Waterford reading K2. Zoom meetings are being held weekly with teachers to discuss the following. Follow up on students who are not on Class Dojo. Follow up on students who do not have a packet. Help students with usernames and passwords. Leave messages for those who did not answer. And send them another in invitation through Class Dojo. The document on the required log, log ARD meetings through Zoom. And again, teachers are contacting students and parents to see if they have received packet and if they need assistance. Chromebooks have also been distributed to students. On page 12, JFK, again, we passed out the student packets last week. 325 packets were, were delivered and they communicate daily with staff through the phone, email, te text, remind app, Google Classroom, Class Dojo, Zoom meetings. Principal and teachers are communicating daily with students, parents using Facebook or other apps. Teachers deliver virtual lessons via Zoom, teacher YouTube, class go through my apps. They're requiring grades for students in math and reading. The support staff, dyslexia, the special ed GT and PE are contacting students via Zoom, Face, FaceTime, class dojo, remind, Google Classroom, Glide, or other communication means. Parent contact log, log you. They're due every, every Friday, Friday by all teachers. They're requiring students to access daily with the accelerated reader, compiling class summary reports each Friday. The counselor is meeting weekly on Facebook and she has lessons for the students. They require a Google Classroom professional development for teachers and principal daily motivational message via Facebook and teacher platforms. On page 13, Ruben Rodriguez, Again, the instructional packets were delivered last week and 420 packets were picked up. They're doing daily Zoom lessons, K-5, daily contact on Zoom. They issued a Chromebook to students. Daily teacher log attendance, submit to principal every Friday. They maintain a separate log, the 504, RTI special ed students. 
nurses conducting wellness checks through phone calls, counseling sessions by Zoom, counseling phone calls check up, one one on one sessions, principal phones phones telephone the parents and students either mail or deliver packets, teachers are conducting. Or, or, or contacting parents for online registration for next year, and then some of the online programs that they have there, the Waterford I still I ready AR Steam Scope and Star and Starfall Samson. On page fourteen LBJ. They're providing instructional packets to students on on days, and and last week three hundred seventeen packets were sent out. Uh, Chromebooks. Have been issued upon request. 100% of teachers connected to parents and students through Class Dojo apps to communicate daily with students and parents. 94 94% of LBJ students parents are connected to teacher on Class Dojo. Teachers provide instructional support to students via Class Dojo, Zoom meetings, FaceTime, and Google Classroom. Teachers are also posting instructional videos. We allow videos, anchor charts, reference materials in Class Dojo, Google Classroom, and Zoom meetings. Teachers assigning content specific lessons and IXL STEM scopes and study items for extra, extra resource. Administrators, principal facilitators monitor instruction and teacher communication by conducting virtual walkthroughs on each teacher's class dojo and Google Classroom, email and group messages providing updates, suggested videos, professional development sessions and directives. Daily morning announcements by principal including counselor motivation and character education video post on their Facebook. The support staff, special ed teachers, resource and unit teachers making daily contact with students, providing instructional support through Zoom, class dojo, communication with teachers to collaborate and plan instructional supports. GT providing enrichment and continuing research project based instruction through Zoom meetings and videos. Dyslexic teachers communicating daily with dyslexic students with Zoom meetings. Parents, students, not only class dojo, are called or emailed on a daily basis. Paraprofessional staff and librarians monitoring instructional programs and assign students to contact the AAP coach, posting videos to engage students in physical activities. All staff maintaining a daily parent-student contact log with parent communication, posting it on principal's Google Classroom. And Jorge Gutierrez. Parent communication logs were collected by the principal every Friday. Class Dojo Remind apps. Teachers notify parents, share work samples, or answer questions parents might have. Principal is part of the group so that she is aware of what teachers are sharing with, with parents. Zoom meetings are being held by some teachers whose students and parents have internet access. Principal holds Zoom meetings with teachers in curriculum department as well as conducting ARD meetings. Distribution of packets every three weeks. Packet completion picture is sent by parents, sent by parents to the teachers every week for a break. And last week, 270 packets were delivered. The webmaster is uploading any new information, messages from staff to the campus website or Facebook. A major function, very, very important, is getting our students to read at home with parents or older brothers and sisters. And the last, the last slide that I have are on the meals. Total number, total number of breakfast and lunch meals since the initial start is 52,510. Meal distribution has been reduced to three days a week as opposed to a five day distribution for employees health, health, uh, health safety. The day, the new days now are, are Monday, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we double up each Tuesday and Thursday. So we actually serve five meals each week. Due to the shortage of cafeteria workers, Campus volunteers have been recruited to help distribute meals. They do not participate in the preparation of the meal. They just help uh, to distribute the meals. And the last day of the program is May, May 29th. At that time, we'll close, we'll close the, the program. And our medical, our, our nurses are going out there to monitor all cafeteria workers and our, and our staff to ensure that they're okay, that they're healthy, and they do it on a weekly basis. The new requirement from the Department of Bank requires all districts to confirm to confirm that the meals being distributed are for students ages 18 or under by visual confirmation or by the parent providing proof that each meal is in fact for a child 18 or under. District is providing options to parents 
to bring their sons and daughters with them when they pick up meals or provide documents for a child confirmed, confirming the age. And then the last, the last slide that I have shows the meals through April the 6th through April, April the 10th, which was last week. And, and you can see that uh, on, on, on Monday, 1557 meals were distributed on, t on Tuesday, 1822, Wednesday, 2131, Thursday, 2384, for a total of 6,968. And for this week, uh, we were off on Monday because of the Easter holidays. So yesterday, 1,426 meals were served, and today a little bit lower, 1,000. 386. Uh, board members, this is my this is my, my superintendent's report. It was lengthy, but I wanted the board to know exactly what was being done at every school and also to show the board the additional monies we have and uh, the servings for the that we have in having the cafeteria. Again, there's a lot of information here, and I'm depending on the principals to make sure that every boy and girl in their in the school is contacted. And uh, they assure me that they are. Uh, there's there's a lot of unanswered questions still about grades and about promotions. So we're working on that, getting everything ready. So, Mr. Board President, board member, do you have any questions on any of what we that I just discussed? Doctor, I just want to touch base on the four million dollars that you mentioned. The four million dollars, you know, said if today were the last day of the school year, there'd be four million dollars in the fund. It's in addition to the current fund balance, correct? Yes, exactly. You know, we, we budgeted this and we've not spent all of it. Perfect. Anybody else have any questions? All right. Thank you very much, Doctor. We're going to go to number five now. Uh, consent agenda items. If nobody has any questions or doesn't want to pull anything out, I'd like to make a motion to approve all consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Osama. Second. Mr. Smalltree. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We're going to go to number six discussion action items. A, discussion action item action to approve missed school day waiver. Contestant statement for TA 2019 20. Dr. Yes, on page seventy of your packet, you have the you have the waiver. TA is requiring since we since we close on our schools, they're requiring that we that the board president and I sign sign a form that just that just stating that we're continuing because we're closed. We're continuing to provide the instruction to our students through the through the methods that I described. So this this has to be signed again by the board president, which he has already and by me. And we submit this to TA again, just to tell them, tell them though that we're closed, we're still providing instruction to our students. Okay. So moved. Second. Motion has been made. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. B. Discussion and action to approve educator appraisal waiver. Yes, yeah, so on page 71, since we did not finish the school year, the principals did not finish all the, the, the evaluation of teachers. So the city is allowing us to go ahead and evaluate a teacher based on the information that we currently have. So we did not complete it. So this is a waiver that TA is asking us to do since we did not uh, complete the evaluation of all our teachers and, and administrators due to the closing of our schools. <clears throat> okay, give me a motion. Second. Okay. All right, there's a motion by Mr. Osano, second by Mr. Morales. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And then you see discussion and action to select a food service management provider for the child nutrition program that includes a dinner program for the 2020-2021 school year. And Mrs. Garza. Good evening, board. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the district went out for bid for our food service management provider. Um, we received those bids and we only received one bid from the Southwest Food Excellence, which, which is your current um, uh, food service provider. Uh, that, that bid came in um, with the added uh, dinner program. Uh, and so we went. I went through the, uh, the packet and um, I'm pretty 
satisfied with what I see. What I see, um, the administrative fees and the management fees are slightly higher, but they do include that new dinner program. Um, so um, we, uh, knowing that we only received one bid, um, this is all we have to compare at the moment. Um, so I am recommending approval. Mr. President, and uh, I don't know if we can do this, but can, is there any way to throw this into executive real quick so we can discuss? I mean, I don't, I, I have no idea what the numbers are. I mean, I, I mean, I, is there any way we can put this in executive and come back to it after executive? Let's see. Oh, I need a motion to move to executive. All right, so I need a motion to move to executive. So move. All right, give me a second. Second. Yeah. A motion to be made and second to move item. Uh, 6C to executive. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, um, Mr. Board President, can I ask Silver one question before we go to executive on this? Yes. On the on the current uh, contract or can I not? Yes. Ben? Yeah. Oh, uh, Sylvia, I, I know when we went in uh, with the current company we have and a part of the contract was that our budget wasn't going to go up. Uh, and whatever the budget was before we got uh, the current company, did the budget go up uh, since since then? The cost, basically, the cost, did the cost exceeded. Yes, did the cost exceed what we had we had uh, negotiated during the times that we were talking with SFE? Are we talking about the prior contract? Or are we talking about the new one? The, the the prior contract, not the new one, the prior one. Did we ever exceed what was budgeted? did not go over as a matter of fact they did have some fund balance that they needed to spend so they did move some of that fund balance USDA wanted them to spend uh, they can only maintain a certain amount of uh, fund balance and so they had to spend some of the fund balance that they had to you know some of those uh, expenditures did come at the end of the year because of some of the equipment that they ordered but they did not go over budget okay all right Right. Um, if there's no other questions then, then we're going to go to the next item, which is uh, seven, closed session. The superintendent requests that the Board of Trustees convene and close meeting as authorized by the provisions of the Open Meetings Act, Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code. This executive session is in accordance with the Texas Government Code 551.074 for the purpose of discussion, personnel, consider appointment, employment, resignation, retirement, evaluation, or reassignment of duties. Any discussion? regarding approval of teacher contracts and non-instructional professional contracts and professional administrative contracts two discussion of superintendent's recommendation to propose for non-renewal term contract professional employees and three discussion on superintendent's recommendation and proposed termination of probationary and or continuing contract professionals then we have item b consultation with legal regarding pending contemplating litigation settlement offers matters in which the duty of the attorney of the under, under texas disciplinary rules it is now 7.04 and we are an executive. Gentlemen, we now switch over to the uh, the executive meeting uh, call.
Item number eight, discussion of possible action regarding personnel concerning appointment, discussion of action regarding approval of teacher contracts, non-instructional professional contracts and professional administrator. Doctor? Yes, you, you have the, uh, the information. I'm recommending approval of all the individuals that I presented tonight. So moved. Second. All right, there's a motion by Mr. Osano, second by Mr. Schlosser. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion passes. Item two, discussion and action on superintendent, superintendent's recommendation to propose non-renewal of term contract professional employees. Doctor? Th there's no action on this one. All right. Yeah. Item three, discussion and action on superintendent's recommendation to propose termination of probationary or continued contract professional employees. I'm going to recommend no action on this one, item three. All right, then B. No action on B, sir. No action on B, then I go to item nine. Let's see here. Oh, we, we need to go to C, Mr. Board President. That's correct, I'm sorry. Returning to 6C, which is discussion action on to, to select a food service management provider for child nutrition program that includes a dinner program for the 2020-2021 school year. Doctor? I'm going to recommend to the board that we that you reject the proposal submitted and that we do the food service program in-house for the 2020-2021 school year. So moved. Second. Okay. All right, there's a motion by Mr. Osano, second by Mr. Schlosser. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye, it's okay. okay. Motion passes. Thank you, doctor. Now we'll go back to item nine, adjournment. So moved. Yes. yes. Motion been made, motion and, this, and second. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, public. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Torres, thank you for everything. Thank you guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.